Hey guys, it's Charles Jager with premiumbeat.com. In this tutorial, I wanna show you how to create this really cool 8-bit video game look all inside of After Effects. This is a really easy effect to create, and we're gonna create it in a way where we have a lot of different customization we can do. You can even create looks very similar to the original Game Boy, and you can even drag and drop the effect directly with the free preset that's included. All right guys, really quickly before we get started, you can download the free project file and the preset from the blog post for this tutorial and that's gonna be on premiumbeat.com. You'll see a link for that in the description of this video. I'll also show you guys how to install the preset a little bit later on in this tutorial. But first, let me just go ahead and show you how we can actually create the 8-bit look from scratch here in After Effects. Now this 8-bit look works on animations and on real world footage and I'm gonna show you some examples of both of those and some of the differences. As you can see here, what I've got is just an animated background. This is kind of like an old video game menu you can see that I've created. And obviously right now it looks way too sharp. It doesn't really have an 8-bit look to it. As you can see, the game menu that I've created is called Coin Hunter 3. I'm not sure if a game out there exists called Coin Hunter, but if it does, I apologize. Because we are going to have to sue you now. All right, let's get started making the look. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a new adjustment layer above everything here. And I'm just going to call this 8-bit look. And the first effect we're gonna use is gonna be Posterize. So I'm just gonna go here to Effects and Presets, type in Posterize. And you'll see it under Stylize there, and I'm just gonna drag and drop this onto my adjustment layer. And what Posterize is gonna do is it's gonna limit the amount of colors that are visible on screen. You can see now we're getting some banding on the three there. It had a gradient on it. And you can see as I adjust the level here, how it's kind of changing the image. So we're just trying to limit the actual color palette that's available, and that's something that's pretty common on old video games. I usually set this between 5 or 15, and in this case here, I'll just start out at 15. Now, the next effect we're going to apply is going to give us the kind of pixel blocky look, and we're going to do it in a little bit of a different method. So traditionally, you've probably seen tutorials using the mosaic effect, and I found another effect that works a lot better, and that effect is called CC Block Load. So I'm going to come here to Effects and Presets, just type in CC Block Load, and I'm going to drag and drop this onto my adjustment layer. Now when I do that, everything on the screen is going to disappear. And this is kind of one of the confusing aspects of CC Block Load. So what this effect is originally intended for is you can see if I come up here to completion and I go ahead and just scroll this up to 100, you can see it kind of gives us that old retro loading screen, like a computer loading an image. And that's what this effect again has been intended for. But if we set the completion on zero and we go ahead and uncheck start cleared, so we want something to be visible. We can now see we get a very pixelated version of our background. Now right now it's way too pixelated. It doesn't really look correct. But you can see on the scans right here, I can adjust this. And as I bring this to a lower value, we get you know more resolution on the background. So you can see on two, it's kind of semi-pixelated. Now I like to set it on a value of three. And I find this is a pretty good medium between giving us those pixelated blocks and still leaving a little bit of detail. But I'm gonna zoom in here to show you something else about CC Block Load and why I prefer it over the mosaic effect. You'll notice off the default, we're working with a 16 by nine size composition, but all of the blocks it's created are perfectly square. So this allows us to avoid having to do all the different math in order to get these pixels to be perfectly square. CC Block Load always creates squares depending on whatever comp size you're dealing with. And that just saves us a lot more time if we're wanting to apply this preset to different size comps. And again, always ensure we get a perfectly square pixel. All right, so the next effect we're gonna apply is gonna be the tint effect. So I'm gonna type in tint. And it's under color correction. I just apply this to that adjustment layer. That's gonna make everything black and white. Now you don't have to have this on depending on whatever look you're wanting to create. But as an example, if I wanted to create something like a Game Boy screen, I would come over here to the map white too, and I'm gonna select that. And I'm just gonna kind of make this a very pale green color, uh, like you're kind of used to with a Game Boy screen. You can see something like that looks pretty good. And I'll go ahead and select OK. So now you can see we kind of get those greenish tones for a Game Boy look. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tint off for the time being, but we have that option always to check that back on later. Now the next effect that really complements and kind of completes the look is gonna be the grid effect. So I'm gonna come over here and type in grid, and you're gonna see it under generate there, grid. I'm gonna apply that to the adjustment layer. And when we apply that, we're gonna see everything disappears again. So there's a few things we need to adjust over here. So for blending mode, I'm gonna go ahead and set this on normal. Next for the color, I'm gonna select that. I'm just gonna select a very dark gray color. Click okay. Now for the actual border, I'm actually gonna set this on two. And I'm gonna zoom in here and I wanna show you something about this when I set that on two. So you actually see the border here when we zoom in on it, 
Even though we have it set on two, it's really only one pixel wide, and that's really what we want. But you'll see if we set this on one, all it does is it kind of makes it transparent, you can see, and that's not what we want. So I'll go ahead and set that on two, and even though it's set on two, it's still only one pixel wide, and that's exactly what we need here. So I'm gonna zoom back out. Now we want this grid to basically map around each of these pixels, and I went ahead and did the math already on the CC block load effect when it's set on a scan of three, and each of these blocks is eight by eight pixels in size. So in theory, if we come over here to the anchor, and we set this at zero and zero, and then for our corner, if we set this at eight, and then the second one at eight as well, we now get a perfect pixel grid as I zoom out here and you can see how that really kind of complements the overall aesthetic of this look. I'm just gonna quickly scroll through here and see how everything looks. And what I really like about the grid is it kind of emulates like, you know, a very small screen. Again, something like you'd see on a portable game system. Finally, the other optional effect we can apply is gonna be the posterize time effect. And that's just gonna kind of slow our frame rate down where we can adjust it really quickly. So let's come over to effects and presets. I'm gonna type in posterize again. And this time under time, we're gonna select posterize time. I'll just apply that as well. And I like to set this on something like 15, just kind of cutting that 30 frames per second in half. And let's do a quick RAM preview on this and just see what this looks like now. All right, now we can see the final effect here with everything coming together on our composition. Definitely gives it a retro game feel. What I like about posterized time limiting the frames is again, uh, in reality with these different objects like these sprites here that would be on screen, they would have a limited frame rate. And so again, you can utilize that with the posterized time effect to make that kind of seem more realistic. They usually wouldn't have 30 different frames. It'd be quite a low frame count. So I might even change this to be eight. If I wanna go even more retro with that, and I'm gonna turn on the Game Boy kind of color scheme here. And so let's go ahead and RAM preview this as well. And now we can see what that looks like, lowering that frame rate down substantially. Again, kind of emulating something that would probably be more on a Game Boy handheld system. All right, so let's take a look at an example of applying this effect on actual real world footage. As you can see here, I've got a shot of my dog. And we can see, when I actually scroll through here, we're getting a very similar effect to the other composition we looked at. But on real world footage, there's a tendency for there to be a lot of kind of pixel flickering. You can see how the pixels are changing from one frame to the next. And I wanna show you a few techniques you can use to minimize that. And so what I would do here in this case, I would select my footage and we wanna apply a Gaussian blur. So I'm just gonna come over here and type in blur. And under blur and sharpen, I'm gonna select the Gaussian blur here and apply that directly to my footage. And what the block pixels are actually kind of doing to our footage is almost as if they're applying a blur, but just kind of like a cubic blur. So when I actually increase the Gaussian blur here, we're not gonna lose that much detail, especially up to a point. And this is gonna kind of blend those colors together, which will help minimize that flickering. I typically would set this on something like between five to eight. And now we can see on the RAM preview how that Gaussian blur is kind of reduced some of that more sporadic flickering. And again, it just looks a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Now, one thing to note, when I do increase that Gaussian blur, it does decrease the contrast you can see there, and it only works up to a point. If I go too far with it, you'll see we really start to lose detail on the actual image. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to something like six. Now, I really like the Gaussian Blur if you're needing to render something out really quickly. However, if you have a lot of time to render something, you may get better results with the Smart Blur effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And if we come back over here, I'm gonna select the Smart Blur and just apply that directly to my footage. What Smart Blur does, it kind of looks at the image and looks at the details and it'll try to blur things that are similar to each other and avoid kind of crossing the colors together. So if I go ahead and turn off the 8-bit look here, we can actually see what this is doing on the footage. You can see it almost kind of looks like a painting. So I toggle this on and off, what it's actually doing to the video, just kind of preserving that detail on the edges. So if I turn back on the 8-bit look, and I might increase the radius here to something like six. And now we can go ahead and see a full screen preview with the Smart Blur. And you'll see that it keeps a lot more contrast detail just keep in mind when you render with the Smart Blur, it's gonna take a lot longer. So use the Gaussian Blur if you are kind of pressed for time and also make sure you check on repeat edge pixels. All right, so now let's take a look at applying the 8-bit look here to some footage that has an alpha channel. So you can see I've got this explosion and it does have an alpha channel. And one thing to keep in mind, if you are gonna resize this element, it's better to do that before you apply the preset. So I'm gonna select this explosion here. I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit. And when I do that, I'm gonna to need to pre-compose that. So again, the composition size is the same size as this comp. So with that footage selected, I'm just gonna come here to layer, and then come down here to pre-compose. And then we'll make sure it's in move all attributes into a new composition and click okay. And that's just gonna ensure that the CC block load effect that's a part of the preset is gonna look correct. 
So I'm just gonna drag and drop the preset I've got here onto this footage. In this case, we're applying it directly onto the clip, not on an adjustment layer. And we can now see this explosion now has kind of that video game pixel look. However, we'll also notice that the pixels are being applied over the alpha channel area, and we don't really want that. And so we're gonna navigate over here to the grid effect to get rid of that. So we come down here to blending mode. You're gonna see we have a few different blending modes here, and these four right here from darken to exclusion, those are gonna be the ones I recommend selecting from if you are working with footage that has an alpha channel. So I'm just gonna select darken here. And now we can see we're left with the pixel kind of lines on our actual element but that alpha channel has been preserved overall. And depending on what your element looks like, will really depend on which one of these blending modes you're gonna select from. You can see if I select lighten, the lines kind of go away somewhat. And then with difference, you just get various results. So go ahead and test those out. Again, if you are working on footage with an alpha channel and use the one that looks best to you. Finally, I just wanna walk you guys through the project file that's included and how to install the free preset. So in the project file, there's a few different scenes set up. The first one is gonna be this Coin Hunter game menu, and I've included all the assets that I made to create this scene, so you can go ahead and break that down. And then I have a few different Game Boy screens set up, so you can see we have the original Game Boy screen, and then I have a Game Boy camera template, which just kinda of has this frame around it. If I toggle off the adjustment layer here, you can see the text there, and you can actually change that text and customize that to whatever you want. Then I have another one of those. It's actually set up for a 1080p size resolution. And then finally, we have the Game Boy Advance resolution screen here. Now to install the preset, it's gonna be the same on Mac and PC. Just navigate to your documents folder, then find the Adobe folder, and then go ahead and locate your version of After Effects you're using. And then click into that, and you're gonna see user presets. And then go ahead and drag and drop that 8-bit game preset into there. And then when you're back inside of After Effects, you can go ahead and toggle that up by just typing in 8-bit game. And that'll bring up that preset that you can then drag and drop. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial creating the 8-bit look inside of After Effects. I would definitely love to see some of the creations you guys make with this preset. And as always, you can find more tutorials like this one on the Premium Beat blog. Again, this has been Charles Jager with Premium Beat. Thanks for watching. Thank you.